Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this week's video, we're looking at the Sound Devices MD4. It's another Sound Devices one, and I should take a moment here to say a huge thank you to the crew at Sound Devices. They've gone out of their way to continually support these videos by sending over gear to demo. It's been really awesome getting to know them personally, so thanks again, Kevin and the team over at Sound Devices for all of your help. To help avoid the inevitable questions, this video was not recorded using the MD4. I've been traveling for a few weeks and had to ship the MD4 back to sound devices prior to finishing this video. Videos 96, 97, and 98 on the channel though were recorded using it and should serve as examples of its quality. The audio on this video was recorded using the new Bayer Dynamic Fox USB mic that I'm testing now in less than optimal locations. It's a mobile microphone, so I'm trying to use it in mobile locations, and I'm using only my laptop to record this video. So what is the MD4? That's a simple question, but it's one with a little bit more depth than you might expect. As Dante networks have become more common in audio productions, installations, and production facilities, it's easy to find yourself in need of different ways to get audio on or off networks. Of course, there are the full-blown options like Yamaha's Rio and Tio racks and the various Dante-enabled mixing consoles, and now we're starting to see things like the Audinate Avio adapters for getting one or two channels in or out at a specific location location, but that leaves a fair amount of middle ground between those two ends of the price and capability spectrum. Right now, other than the Yamaha Tio racks and a few other uh, smaller boxes, Dante options for more than two channels in each direction under $2,000 are pretty thin on the ground. The adapters and two-channel I.O. boxes are really handy and they definitely have their place, but four channels in and four channels out is just a really useful configuration in a lot of real-world situations. Uh, having four line level inputs are useful of course but then also having four high quality mic preamps really adds another level of flexibility into what you can use this unit for assignable balanced line level outputs and a high quality headphone amplifier to monitor all inbound and outbound channels can also have a lot of uses especially backstage at various production positions so functionally it's a dante interface and it also happens to work really well just as like a computer audio interface getting a few channels in or out of your computer for recording Recording. But how the heck did this come from sound devices? It doesn't look like anything else they've ever made. And it turns out it's not entirely from them. User J. Peterson Productions on Instagram was quick to point out the similarity to the Studio Technologies 5414, and indeed he was correct. When you open up the MD4, inside you'll find this beautiful PCB that was put together by Studio Technologies. Now, their unit is priced just about $100 less than what the MD4 is typically sold for until recently, with the main difference being the addition of a locking XLR style DC power input on the MD4, which allows you to use this unit mobile applications and that definitely makes this unit a sound devices unit that is one of the key components to their equipment is the ability to use it with batteries in hostile and remote locations without the need for mains electricity and if this is the kind of functionality you might need in a mobile situation this is a really really good deal and i believe that's true at the normal selling price this unit typically retails for 1795 dollars again there's just not much out there to do this under two thousand dollars there's a few other units but with the sound device's name and reliability and mobile battery power options. And if you would all agree with that sentiment, you might be really shocked to find out they're actually having a summer sale right now and they have dropped the price of this unit to just below $500. Yes, it's $495 right now. And that's just a staggering deal on this. If you need this functionality, I would order one today. So let's run through the features and controls. They've made this unit incredibly simple to operate and I really appreciate that. It's also surprisingly lightweight, coming in at only three pounds, six ounces, and with the removable rack ears, it's an attractive choice for travel. Starting around the front, we have the four electronically balanced capacitor coupled inputs with a nominal input impedance of 4,000 ohms. Each channel has a eight segment LED input meter displaying digital full scale, an XLR input, and an indicator light each for high pass filter, which is 6 dB down at 75 Hertz and 18 dB per octave roll off, and the 46 volt nominal phantom power supply 
along with a button to select that channel. And that's it. We head over to the input control section and find the high pass filter and phantom control buttons along with up and down controls to adjust the input gain. Up to 70 dB of gain can be applied here. Next, we get to the input and output monitor section. This is where you can choose to monitor locally any of the eight channels of audio passing through the unit. Now you can do this individually, monitoring an input or an output channel as needed, or you can toggle to dual mode and listen to a pair of adjacent channels. The limitation here is that in dual mode, you can only listen to adjacent pairs, like input one and two together, three and four together, or outputs one, two, and three and four on the output side. The audio is sent both out the front panel headphone output as well as out the rear output. And it should be noted that when the front panel uh, headphone jack is used, the rear jack is automatically disabled. That can be a handy feature. On to the backside now. Like every piece of Sound Devices kit that I can think of, we find dual power inputs, AC mains input from 100 volts to 240 volts, either 50 or 60 hertz, meaning you can travel all around the world without worrying. And of course, being Sound Devices, you have the ready to go four pin XLR DC power input that'll accept anywhere from 10 to 18 volts DC, making this unit very battery power friendly for real mobile situations. Next, we have the Dante connection. It's a single genuine Neutrik Ethercon connection with a status indicator lights recess below, and after that there's a USB-A connector used only for firmware updates. The dip switches here are a very simple way to select the analog reference levels for both the inputs and the outputs. Switches 1 and 2 control the input side, switches 3 and 4 control the output side in much the same fashion. These options for both the input and output configuration make interfacing with other equipment and maintaining compliance to various standards really simple. Next up we have that rear headphone monitor output that disconnects automatically when the front jack is used. This can be really handy in situations where you might want to use that rear panel output to feed a powered monitor speaker. But but when you plug in your headphones, you want those speakers to automatically turn off. After that, we have the four assignable XLR outputs. The line outputs are electronically balanced, again, capacitor coupled and ESD static protected. According to Sound Devices literature, their quote is, the line outputs are compatible with virtually all balanced and unbalanced loads with an impedance of 2000 ohms or greater. No special precautions are necessary when using the line outputs in settings where a variety of signals may be present. The circuitry is protected from damage in cases such as the accidental connection to a powered amp analog party line intercom circuit or to a microphone signal with phantom power present. Now that is exactly why Sound Devices gear is chosen by pros in demanding situations. When you're traveling the world trying to capture audio that may only happen one time, you really don't want to be worrying about blowing up your gear in a quick run and gun situation where you need to patch into a foreign system quickly. So that's the Sound Devices MD4. What an absolutely crazy review this has been. I've only had the unit a couple months and you know, to expect them to drop the price this far, it was I thought it was a good deal to start with. Uh, if you're used to dealing with Dante equipment, you know how much this stuff costs. There's not a whole lot going on right now in Dante enabled devices that's affordable. So for them to drop the price this much further, it's still absolutely crazy. And if it's something that you need functionality wise, regardless of the fact that it's a Sound Device product with the battery uh, options and can be used in mobile environments. $500 for just this functionality in a Dante unit is, is incredible right now in 2018. So that's it for the MD4. I hope this doesn't come off as like a prepared advertisement or something. I had absolutely no clue they were going to lower the price this far. Uh, I'm regretting the fact that I sent the one back that I had on loan and I'm thinking about buying one here for uh, future use if I can somehow justify it because it's just a handy piece of gear to have around. So that's it for this time. Head over to the website dcsoundop.com for more information, resources, tools, free videos, and thanks to everybody who supports the channel either directly through Patreon or by visiting the affiliate links down in the description below or over on the website. It really makes a big difference and helps me to continue putting out these videos. I'll see you next time.